You love it, you catch flight for it. It's the type of food that makes you want to slap your mama. Okay, honestly, where does that expression come from? Like, why would I want to... So I digress, I digress. Soul food and African Caribbean cuisine. All this and more coming up shortly, so don't go anywhere. Hello and welcome to Kairos Maggie TV where I encourage you to submerge yourself in culture and live meaningful lives. And today is the final episode for our Celebrating Black History series. If you haven't seen the other two, go ahead and check them out. We covered black inventors, leaders and writers and also looked at music that was inspired by black folk. Today, today we're going to be talking about food. Yes, the cuisines that we also love but we need to understand where it came from and understanding this will help you to realize why it is so important for us to preserve our culture especially through food now let's dive in because we have a lot to cover looking at cuisine in the caribbean a very popular one oxtail what was once considered a discarded and undesirable part of the meat is now today one of the most expensive meats you can buy ranging from like four to ten dollars per pound in doing some research i found that it's popular in some american and african cultures as well it was once considered poor man's meat because back in slavery days it was the least desirable cut of meat and the plantation owners would not eat it because it took too long to cook and they just preferred higher end cuts of meat now as it's adapted by different countries and cultures people cook it different ways for the most most part it is encouraged that because it is high in gelatin that you should cook it slow and under low heat personally I just use a pressure cooker to cook mine and I call it a day thing done quick quick did I talk about how the meat falls off the bone oh gosh I'm getting hungry all right move on Maggie next moving on the history of jerk now I'm sorry to burst your bubble but jerk is more than just putting some jerk sauce onto chicken and putting it into the oven that's just baked chicken with jerk seasoning on it, okay? Jerk chicken or jerk pork, it's a process. Now, it's often said that the Tainos were the ones who actually developed this form of cooking and they taught it to the Maroons. And here's a clip to sum up the process of this type of cooking. It, it was a mixture of the Maroons and the Tainis um, that get together after they take to the hills to um, fight their battle against the British. And um, that was their way of preserving their, their, their meat because there was no cold storage or anything and no salt so they, they, would, they would just smoke it so it could, they could keep it for, for, for days. In order for them to survive, the Maroons had to capture wild animals like pigs and season them and cook them in this method that we know today as jerk. The method of digging a hole to, to jerk a whole pig, right? So. You, they, they would definitely dig a hole and, and make the fire on top of the hole. So that was, was like cooking the, 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 the meat before really smoking it. And then after you, 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 you put the, the meat down into the, into the hole, then um, put layers of wood and trash and make the fire on top of them. And then it would tenderize the meat. And then from there you take it out and then you would still have to smoke it for it for, to preserve it to keep it for that distance of time you want to go with this segment was brought to you by bloom seed a toronto-based head spa that specializes in luxurious beauty products to heal nourish rejuvenate and beautify the hair and scalp if you're in need of hair care products to give you real results visit their website at www.bloomseed.com now back to the video Now this is a term used for the ethnic cuisine traditionally eaten by African Americans in Southern United States. And Southern United States is often known as like Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, that part that's known as the Deep South. Yes, they are known for soul food. This style of cooking originated during the times of slavery where slaves were given leftovers or undesirable parts of meat that the plantation owners just didn't want. Now I'm going to be breaking down the main categories of soul food that you might have heard of. While beef is associated with barbecue in Texas, for the deep south, 
Pork is king for barbecue. Slaves did majority of the cooking for plantation owners. The process of how they used to preserve their meat so that it could last for a longer time because they didn't have fridge in those days was that they would salt the meat to dry it out, then they would smoke it. Oftentimes it was also pickled. Now, while the slave owners were given the best parts of the meat, the slaves were given the undesirable parts like the pig's feet, the head, you know, the intestines like chitlins. That's where all of these foods come from. But they were very creative. They utilized a lot of hot spices and their innovative creativity to cook these delicious meals and make something for themselves. Second, cornbread. Now one of the ways that the slave owners also held authority and power over the slaves was that they would give them very small rations of food. And so the slave had to find very creative ways of how they would either make that food stretch or how they would find time to prepare it because they were also given limited time periods to cook their food. Cornbread was one such meal that was super easy to make that took very little time. The indigenous peoples of the Americas taught them how to grow and how to use maize or corn, which is how they were able to then take inspiration from the indigenous peoples of America to make their own type of cornbread. Next on the list, we have greens, or what you commonly know as collard greens. Yes, the collard greens. So the greens were basically any leafy vegetables that the slaves had to their disposal that they would boil mainly with animal fat and the animal fat was used to give flavor to the vegetables because the ration of food that they were given especially in meat it wasn't really enough to make like meals on itself with just the meat so they would utilize it to flavor their vegetables or they would also use it for making stews and that's how the concept even of one pot meals came about because you had to make just enough for everybody to last for a while have you ever heard of the term pot liquor well, this term came about because it was known as the flavorful water or juices that was left over from the cooking process of the vegetables. And it would often be soaked up and eaten with cornbread. Okra. Now, this is a common vegetable in the Caribbean, in parts of the United States, in Africa as well because it is native to Ethiopia, but we'll get into that soon. But the slaves, they were very much deprived from fresh fruits and vegetables that they were used to. And okra, however, was one of those things that they had access to because it was brought from Africa when they brought over slaves to the Americas. The slave masters also brought that vegetable with them. The slaves were able to grow it themselves in their own little quarters and so it was often used in a lot of their meals as well. Today, however, in the South, it's popular especially fried in the caribbean however i know they use it in a lot of dishes especially with fish like escovish fish or like roast fish you would put okra in there very nice in parts of west africa it's often used as a thickening agent for soups and stews gumbo does that ring any bells in your head yes this is a popular stew dish that is also made with okra that is popular in parts of the states of course there are many more foods that are a part of the southern diet but i want you to take the time right now to comment in the comment section below what are some southern meals that you know about? Or which are your favorites? Now moving on over to Canada. Now I was really struggling to find information about, you know, African food influence in Canada. However, I was able to find information specific to African Nova Scotian food through an interview that was done with Wendy Wilson and the York Region Food Network. Now in order to understand why some of the foods in Nova Scotia are so similar to, you know, the southern culture or even the Caribbean culture, we have to understand the history of how some of the folks even got there in the first place. So first we had black loyalists who were promised freedom, land and rights by the British if they fought in the American Revolutionary War. The second war was the War of 1812 and then we had the Jamaican Maroons who also came over and then last but not least through jobs that were provided through the steel mills we had mostly immigrants from Barbados who migrated to parts of especially Cape Britain. I hope I pronounced that correctly. So even today in Cape Britain, there is a big um, Bayesian community because of this. So some of the foods that are very common and popular in the African Nova Scotian diet are you have the green tomato chow chow, 
you have fish cakes this is actually very common in Barbados so fish cakes I believe this is something that Bayesians who came over during that time for job opportunities I believe it would be in the late 1920s they came over and brought their food culture of course so fish cakes is something that's common and this is where it comes from salt cod and pork scraps boiled dinner which consisted of like pigtail and like rooted vegetables baked beans specifically yellow eyed beans which is soaked overnight and it's gently boiled and in there they would add blackstrap molasses ketchup mustard onion some people would also add pork scraps or something else like a salted meat i believe and you also have cornbread all in all if there's anything that i learned while doing this research there are three takeaways from this it's that firstly a lot of the foods that we enjoy today they definitely came as a result of survival and persistence of our ancestors we find a lot of similarities between black food culture because of the limited resources that they were given they were given very little land to grow food on even if they were given land, it was infertile land. So a lot of the food that they would grow would be rooted vegetables and things like that. So like yam, potatoes, you know, those potatoes, carrots, those rooted vegetables is very common in our diet. And that is the result of it. And lastly, as cultures evolve, so does the recipes. And so you can see today where we're in a society where different cultures are living amongst each other. There will be a lot of fusion of foods. But also when people are migrating, they will bring the influence of their food culture with them as well. Let me know in the comment section below any food that you can identify that is a part of the African culture as a result of this history that we have. I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to do road and do things and until next time, Maggie is out.